Gay Podcast. Dom Jamali here. What's up? What's up? What's up? Back with another scandal review. Today I will be reviewing 510 Scandal Baby is Cold Outside. Woof. Did you guys see Scandal last night or what? I mean, what a shocking and well put together episode by Shonda Rhimes once a damn again. I. I mean, she never fucking ceases to amaze me. Just when I'm ready to count Scandal out or say she can't top that, she always does. I mean, she finds a way. The episode wasn't necessarily exciting. We didn't get any amazing cliffhanger at the end, but it didn't need that. The episode ended, and I'm going to work backwards. The episode ended with everybody doing the things that they do for the holidays. Olivia is out of the White House. She's at her place. She got a new couch. Quinn is drunk, but her uh, B613 boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, comes over to hang with her. I think the guy's name is Marcus, the new guy who's working for OPA. I think he's Marcus, whatever his name is. He has a family, so he goes home. Huck drops um Eli Pope off at the house and he has a conversation with um Scott Foley why can't I remember his real name (laughs) has a conversation with uh y'all know who I'm talking with Jake has a conversation with Jake and Jake might be B613 again like this whole B613 thing might be started up again so that's pretty much what we see at the end Melly's with her kids Fitz, I think he was somewhere sitting alone. Um, We basically just seen at the end everybody having their Christmas moment. Now, let me skip back forward. The episode opens up and we basically are getting snapshots and snippets of what has happened over time. It doesn't necessarily say how much time has gone past, but from the snippets and and this and that, it has skipped a, a significant amount of time from where we were last episode because it's Christmas now. And we're seeing, in the snippets and clips, we're seeing pictures of Olivia basically schmoozing, being uh, the president's wife, the first lady, taking on those roles and taking on those jobs. That's what we see her doing pretty much. And when the epi- I think when the episode opens up, she's in the closet looking at her closet and looking at her clothes, and Fitz walks in, and he says, I like that. That's pretty much the first scene we see with them. You can tell she's very unhappy. Skip a little bit forward. It's a a dinner party, some type of dinner party. She's schmoozing, and the lady says, I need your help. I have an issue, a problem. So she drops everything, sort of, and, you know, she is immediately ready to help this, this woman because she figures that it's going to be some type of OBA. Like, there's really going to be some juicy drama, you know, which she hasn't had in months or weeks or however long it's been. And the lady asks for some cookies, you know, a cookie recipe. And you can see her disappointment. Also throughout the episode with Olivia, we see her staring at the TV a lot. Um, there was even a moment where Abby says, uh, no. Well, yeah, it is a moment where Abby says, you know, maybe we should get Olivia to um, counter counter this or work work with this and spin it. And um, the president says she's busy. She wasn't busy. As we saw, she was sitting there staring at the TV watching the situation. And the situation was Melly. We see Melly at the beginning of the episode. She walks into this office and she asks a question about Planned Parenthood. Pretty much these men, these good old boys, is sitting around and they're like, look, we getting rid of Planned Parenthood because we don't care nothing about the minorities, the poor women, we don't give a fuck about none of y'all. That's pretty much what they're saying. And she, she feels some type of way. And I'm not sure if she feels some type of way just because of the way he was acting, the way he was carrying himself and kind of bossing her. Or if she really cared about Planned Parenthood. Because we saw her in the bathroom later on with Olivia. And she said that, you know, I'm a Republican for God's sakes. I'm basically saying I don't give a fuck about Planned Parenthood. But I didn't like the way he was bossing me around. So I'm not sure, like, what, you know, what um, lane she was taking with that. But she was upset by that. 
So throughout the whole episode, Melly is, I guess it was the Senate. I don't necessarily know where they was at, but they this is the Senate House, whatever you want to call it. They sitting around and is this bill. I think it's a bill. They want to pass some type of bill that's basically um, uh, not limiting the funds for Planned Parenthood, but basically putting the funds on a uh, on. Um, pardon me, y'all. I don't remember the exact you know words that they use, but basically Planned Parenthood is going into a phase where they can take the money away, you know, at any time. They can take all the money away at any time and there will be no Planned Parenthood or they can keep shipping, shipping, shipping away at the money for Planned Parenthood till there's no more, pretty much. And basically, Melly steps up and she says, you know what? She grabs the book and she says, let me tell y'all about all the things that could be put in this position and in this phase other than Planned Parenthood. It's women out here who need that. You know what I'm saying? I think in a, in, in, a, in a certain part, she said, not even speaking for myself, but for, you know, people who are necessarily poor, or don't have the funds to do things that she could do, they may need Planned Parenthood. You know what I'm saying? So she sat up there for 16 hours talking to these people because basically she lasted 16 hours. They couldn't go go forward with the bill and whatever it was. So that's what Olivia was watching on the TV the whole time watching this play out. And I felt as though she was kind of uh, admiring her or living through Melly when she was watching the TV because she couldn't do those things. You know, uh, she couldn't stand up for what she believed in because Fitz basically put her in this damn house to be some type of puppy, puppet, whatever you want to call it. And Melly is out here making moves, being a, the strong woman that she is, and that she's finally fucking evolved into after fucking, like, two seasons. But, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have that, and, and eventually she goes and does something about it. First, she goes to one of the ladies that were in the Senate, and she asks them to ask a question so Melly can use the bathroom. Because, as everybody can see on television, because this was televised, like, all over the country, I'm pretty sure, probably on CNN or some shit. As we as everybody could see, she could she had to pee. She was sweating. She needed a break pretty much. She was about to piss herself. And she asked the, the lady in there, you know, ask a question so she can go to the bathroom so she can get a break so she can do this. And the lady was I mean, she bitch please. Okay. I don't even want to get into her cuz I can't. I can't stand a woman who don't support other women. Bitch, go have several seats some damn where and then what pissed me off about her to go on this short rant ain't she the same bitch from like five episodes ago that was like oh we're getting together and we're going against the men because the men don't respect us well bitch how you gonna start this whole motherfucking shit and talk about how the men don't respect y'all but then sit up here and when Melly trying to do something you know to go against them you sitting over there acting like you ain't you ain't for it. Like I can't stand that bitch, and I'm so happy Melly gave her the bitch please when she tried to hold her hand out for her. But that's <laughs> I'm sorry I had to go on that rant because I can't stand a bitch like her. Okay, so she says she can't do it. So Olivia comes up with this brilliant plan and gets the vice president to go in there and handle the situation. The vice president walks in there. She's like, I'm sorry to fucking throw my rate around. I ain't that type of a bitch, but you in my motherfucking seat. Get the fuck up. She sits down. She asks a lengthy question. Melly is completely grateful. She goes to the bathroom, pees, and Olivia's in the bathroom. And Melly, I don't remember the exact conversation, but Melly basically says, you know, I should have known it was you, you know, and I, I'm pretty sure she thanked her. And um, they had a moment where Olivia says, you're the you're the biggest bitch I know. You know, and when I took that as like, you the baddest bitch, like you doing your motherfucking thing right now, handle that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I'm lit, like Olivia's living through her. So she was like, I'm living through you right now. Do that motherfucking thing. And um, Melly says, oh, yeah, you got some type of dinner tonight. Good luck with that. You know, that boring ass shit. And she goes back and she ends up finishing the 16 hours and Planned Parenthood is still in place. Thank God. You know, I'm acting like this is a real this is real life or something. But Planned Parenthood is still in place in Scandal Land, Scandal World, Shonda Land, whatever you want to call it. And everybody can go home for Christmas now. 
the president is sitting at the dinner. I don't remember what type of dinner it was, but he's sitting there. He looks across the table. Olivia's not there. Next thing we see, Olivia's in some type of hospital, doctor's office, might even goddamn be Planned Parenthood, for God motherfucking sakes. She is this bitch, and they're like, okay, you ready for the procedure? She goes back, and you see her putting her legs in the damn thing, and I'm like, don't tell me she about to get a motherfucking abortion. So in my mind, I'm like, she ain't getting an abortion. I'm like, there is no way. There's no way, because it was like no signs of her being pregnant. We didn't see her take a pregnancy test. We didn't hear her talk about it. We didn't see no special looks on her face or nothing. Like, it was no sign. Shout out to fucking uh, Shonda Rhimes. No fucking signs of, of, of pregnancy anywhere. So I'm thinking of all of the other different types of things it could be, you know, other than abortion. I'm like, okay, maybe she's just getting her vagina checked to make sure. Then I'm like, okay, oh shit, maybe she got a disease. Like, oh, I'm going through everything on the list. So pretty much she gets an abortion and she misses the whole dinner. She walks into the White House, walks into the room where um, the president is there. I think it was like their bedroom. And she passes him. He's asking questions and shit all up in her face like usual. She goes straight to the to the closet and she's looking for uh, Melly's alcohol, you know, Melly's liquor that she left. And she finds it. And this is where they have basically um, their truth moment, their first like really true, uh, their first actual truth moment where they just laying everything out on the table. And this was an incredible scene to me. Um, Olivia lets him lets him know, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I had something to do, I couldn't make it. He's like, what did you have to do? And I don't remember what she says, but then he yells, don't lie to me, and here we go. You know what I'm saying? They start up. And it was a certain point where he said, he looked at her and he was like, well, um, it's better than how you were raised or where you came from. Y'all, tell me why I set the fuck up in my motherfucking seat when he said that. I said, hold up. Because I <laughs> y'all, I started to think, because I know Olivia came from like a beautiful background, rich, like the whole nine. But I started to think... I, for some reason, I forgot where the fuck she came from. And I started to think, like, no, he ain't talking about because she came from the hood. Like, I started, <laughs> I started to say, I was ready to go off on that motherfucker. I was red deep. Y'all don't even know. But then I was like, okay. Because then after that, she was like, my background better than yours. At least my father loved me. Your motherfucking father out here raping your wife and all types of shit. Your nasty ass dad. You know, I mean, she don't go into all of that, but we know what she fucking really mean. And then I was like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. She a rich bitch. She came from a good background. (laughs) So he can't necessarily go there. He was just talking about her dad being command and the mom being shit and all of that. So they had a little back and forth moment. And she stands in the, she's about to walk out, but she freezes in the doorway uh, when she says something like, um, you know, I thought we had time before or I thought we had more time or something like that. And at that moment, I thought she was going to say something about the abortion. Like the whole time they're having this intense discussion, I'm thinking that the abortion is going to come out. She's going to say it, it's going to slip or she, you know, whatever. So, you know, I'm on the edge of my seat because of that as well. And then in that moment, I, I thought that's when the fucking shoe was going to drop, but it doesn't. And uh, I think she uh, takes it, uh, takes it to, um, you know, just having time before they moved into the White House and started a relationship. And basically the truth comes out where one of them admits, you know, I didn't know, uh, I think it was Olivia. She said, I didn't know you. I didn't know you as a single man. I knew you as like a married man. I knew you when you weren't available. That's what I knew you as. And I didn't have time to, you know, learn who you were basically as a single man. She was like, Melly got this side of you. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking she meant like, I don't even fucking like this side of you. You know what I'm saying? Like Melly got this side of you and I got the other side and that side was fine. You know what I'm saying? And they basically sit down and drink and and they're basically like, you know, what we tried and blah, blah, blah. And um, also at the beginning of of the, at the discussion, Olivia does call him out on the shit being a punishment you know, her, him moving her into the White House, which I agree with. I do think that was some form of punishment. And then he had the nerve to say, I asked you to move in here. Olivia fucking stopped and said, bitch, I'm confused. Who's lying to who? When did you ask me to move in? 
And I mean, Fitz, y'all know I can't stand him, but it's something about him that is so fucking delusional. I mean, when she's checking him and talking to him and letting him know the real and how she feels, look at his face. I want y'all to go back and look at this motherfucking fool's face. He look like he's so dumbfounded. He don't understand where she's coming from. He don't know what he did. How could she come to these conclusions? I can't stand him. Something about him is so fucking delusional. You know you didn't fucking ask her to move into that motherfucking house. You knew you was making a power move. You knew you was calling yourself, putting your motherfucking foot down because she let her father out and you was going to move her in because you knew that wasn't the type of woman she was. You knew you knew Olivia's not the type of bitch to be bossed around and be some trophy wife and do this and that. She's a boss bitch. And I think she even said that in the discussion. She was like, I'm supposed to sit on the side and shamooze your guests while you're, you're being a boss with other bosses. She said, I'm a boss. And I don't remember if she used those exact words, that, but that bitch said, I'm a boss. I'm a boss too. You know what I'm saying? That's why I respect Olivia so much, dog. Like, I'm a boss. You know I'm a boss because that's what you fell in love with. That's what you fell in love with. And this fool had the nerve to say, oh, you're just like Melly. Because you know when he get upset with her, he always got to bring Melly in the picture. Oh, you just like Melly. I thought you was better than Melly. Melly, Melly, Melly. Bro, are you still in love with Melly? Are you still, do you want her back? Because I'm confused. Because every time you bringing her up in this shit. And um, she was like, um, what'd she say after that? I don't even goddamn remember. But basically, when he said, um, you know, you just like Melly or whatever, that had me thinking, bruh, you, you basically put her in Melly's spot and made her Melly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, molded her into Melly. Like, I want you to do this, all this first lady shit. Like, something about him is fucking delusional, and I cannot take it. I cannot fucking take it. But to, just to get off of that shit to move on to something else. Oh, but yeah, after that, she moves out the White House. But yeah, to move on to something else, we got Eli Pope and Huck. They have a nigga little moment. And I don't really understand exactly why Huck took Eli Pope. Like, I'm still trying to figure that out. But they have a moment where Eli tries to, you know, do what he normally does. Do that fast talking shit to get into somebody's head. And then Huck comes right the fuck back with some shit and he's like look don't talk about my kids because your daughter out here you hear what they say about your daughter how she whoring around and this and that and this and that so he checks the fuck out of him and, and that's pretty much the first time we see Eli, Eli Pope uh break down in a way see him scared see him unsure because we always see him you know sure of himself and he's the boss and he's you know making power moves and shit but this is the first moment where we really saw him you know Kind of, kind of break down. Also, throughout this episode, you know, we still got the David and Lizzie Bear situation. David tries to give her a bracelet. She doesn't want it because she didn't give him a gift or whatever that situation was. So we all know the vice president has a thing for him. And I don't understand why David, David is fucking just dumb as the fucking president. Because it's like, how do you not see that this bitch has a thing for you? She's staring in your face looking at you like you're the love of her life or some shit, like, and you, you still don't see it? So this fool gives her the bracelet that he was going to give Lizzie Bear, which was disrespectful in itself. Don't give me no gift. I don't care if you like me, don't like me, we're friends, whatever the fuck it is. Don't give me no fucking shit that you was about to give somebody else. That is so disrespectful to me. That's so disrespectful. It's... It's bad enough. It's bad enough that we're friends or we're cool and we've been hanging out and shit and you didn't get me nothing, period. But that's fine. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Because I get you something and I ain't even worried about you getting me anything. But then you gonna give me some shit that you gonna give another bitch knowing that she fucking in love with him? I can't. Too, too much. I can't deal with David's ass either. But at the end, um, Vice President is giving Lizzie Bear a scarf, and she obviously don't like the scarf, but she ends up seeing a bracelet on uh, the Vice President's hand, and she's like, where'd you get that from? And the Vice President's like, oh, David gave it to me, you know, with a huge smile on her face, and we see that, um, that Lizzie Bear definitely felt some type of way about that, so I don't know if that means she's falling for him or what, but whew, ah, that episode was amazing, and I loved how it ended. Like I said in the beginning, it was no cliffhanger, but it was perfect. It was perfect because it was like the end of a chapter. It was the end of a chapter. And I want to say it's the end of Olitz and Fitz and Olivia. 
but no one fucking Shonda Rhimes. I, I mean, that's the only downfall I can say about Shonda Rhimes. I'm done with this fucking Olivia and Fitch shit. Like I said a couple episodes ago, this shit gotta stop. I can't, I'm tired of it. New storyline, new love interests, something, new something. B613, all this shit, we need something new. Like, let's go in the back in the writer's room, roll the dice, and, and see what the fuck we get. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do something different. I can't deal with the same shit next season. Like, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need this to be an ending, like it felt like, and for them to do something completely different next fucking season. But yeah, beautiful fucking episode, incredible episode. I loved it. Shout out to Shonda Rhimes. Um... Okay, um, I don't really have any, like, predictions for February 11th, but I do hope that we can move the fuck on from Olitz, and I hope that Olivia has finally figured herself out, because after having a truth moment with Fitz, I'm hoping that she actually heard herself. Like, you know, like we say things sometimes that we don't actually hear and understand what we're saying. But I'm, I, I hope that she actually hears her or heard herself. Excuse me. I hope she actually heard herself and took that in and under fucking stood <laughs> what the fuck she was saying. And, um, you know, just just from what she was saying, like, I'm a boss and this and this and this because she hasn't been acting like it. You know what I'm saying? Like. And I hope we can we can we can go back to fucking first season Olivia and I'm not saying I want us to fucking you know go backwards because everybody has to evolve and become better people but I I want her to be that strong black woman you know power you know I want that back I want that back um maybe a new love interest I don't know if the scandal fans is going to be ready for that but maybe you know what I'm saying I think I'm ready but maybe a new love interest for her and um, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything. I, I guess Jake is going to be B613. I don't even fucking know. Um, damn. Okay, I'm on 22 minutes now. Uh, just quickly. I know if y'all motherfuckers watch Scandal, y'all watch How to Get Away with Murder too. That episode was fucking good too. I don't even understand how Shonda Rhimes can goddamn write four shows five i think she got five she got another one that's in the fucking the works and shit i don't understand how she can have five fucking shows and all of them motherfuckers be good at least the three that we've seen it's another one about to come out i don't know if it's coming out in january or what it's another one about to come out in this comedy that she's working on so it's three that we actually see I don't know how she can work on all these motherfucking shows and all of them be fucking good. Like, bitch, if you ain't talented, I don't know who the fuck it is. How to, I don't watch Grey's Anatomy, but I, I guess it's good because it's still on air. But How to Get Away with Murder, goddamn, that shit was fucking good. Whew, I, I'm, I might just do a separate review for that shit because that was a good fucking season. Um, it wasn't as good as last season, but it was good. And um, it, was, it was a pretty good episode last night. Um, I did say, or I did tell y'all, my subscribers only, that I am going to start vlogging and I am going to start getting on camera, but this is what I've decided to do. I'm still going to start vlogging and I'm, I'm still going to get on camera and all of that. Um, like I told a few of y'all, I have actually done a video. Like I've recorded already. I just haven't edited and, and done all of that and, and got it up yet. But, um... What I'm going to do is I'm still going to do my Pretty Little Liars reviews and my Scandal reviews and stuff like that. I'm still going to do those videos audio, audio only. And my vlogging where I'm talking about my life and, and trying to help other people with certain situations, that I'm going to do on camera. So even though it's going to be the same thing, same channel, um, I'm just going to do it two different ways. Because I'd rather just sit here and talk to y'all you know, with audio, and then when I'm trying to help people, then they see my sincerity in my in my face and all of that. <laughs> so yeah, that video is coming for all of y'all that's waiting for that, because I know y'all are like, what the fuck does Dom look like? It's coming. Wait, hold your horses. It's coming. Um, what else? What else? Oh, shout out to Adele, that Adele album dropped. And I know y'all got to, if y'all rocking with me, y'all got to be fans of Adele. 
I pre-ordered that shit yesterday. I pre-ordered that shit at like 10 o'clock at night, which I know is stupid because the shit came out at 12. But <laughs> I pre-ordered it and got that shit at like 12.25. It was a little late. iTunes, I'm going to need them to get their shit together because it was a little late. But I got that shit and I have been I didn't listen to it all the way through one time already. And that shit, man... I didn't know how it was going to be, but that shit is good so far. But, yeah, if y'all haven't got that deal, I'm get it. Vlogs are coming. Y'all, thanks for, you know, holding me down and sticking with me for that long. I got 45 subscribers. That may, next, that may not seem like a lot to y'all, but when you started out with five, hey, thank God for that. I'm blessed. Peace, y'all. Um, like, comment, and subscribe.